Hello, everyone. Well, to quote the poet Jim Morrison, this is the end, beautiful friend. This is my final episode of my top 100 list. We have come to the top 10. And um, I have to say, this has been a very challenging exercise, very rewarding, certainly time consuming. And um, it's something that I think uh, is uh, well worthy of, uh, of people's time. I think uh, I would love to see more people do uh, their top 100 lists, especially for those with much larger collections than mine. <laughs> I know that probably sounds like a uh, insane assignment, but uh, really, it's uh, it's a good uh, it's a good thing to do, just to make you think a little bit about uh, what you listen to, and where you would basically kind of rank at least a hundred of the albums in your collection. Um, my uh, top ten here is all picked and ready to go. Uh, and I guess I'll start with number 10. And uh, <laughs> I'm not going to make the dumb joke, you know, that I sound like a broken record when I mention this guy. But it's true. Rory Gallagher, live, makes my top 10. Um, in all honesty, this could have been Irish Tour 74. This could have been... Actually, the very first album that I ever bought and listened to by Rory, which is called Stage Struck, which came out, I think, in the later 70s. And that was a live album as well. Uh, basically, I mean, all, all three of those live albums are good. I don't know if there's any others out there. I'm sure there are. But, uh, yeah. I, for as much as I've talked about this guy and for as much as I enjoy his music... There's no way I could leave him out of the top 10. And I've shown Irish Tour 74 several times in other videos. So I wanted to give another album, which is just as good, even though it's not a double album, it's just a single album. Um, yeah, I would have loved to have seen this guy back in the day. And uh, all I can tell you is, is the guitar work is fiery, technically very, you know, it's not sloppy and powerful with a lot of energy fire passion uh yeah Rory Gallagher's got it and uh probably for as long as I've been listening to music as long as I make videos I'm sure you'll see him pop up still in the future so uh highly recommend any of his albums especially any of his live albums he's one of those guitar heroes like you know Stevie Ray or Jimi Hendrix or you know, these other guys, their live albums are where the real money is at for me. So, uh, number 10 is Rory Gallagher Live. I love that guy. I never see him on the VC. Nobody, ever, nobody else mentions him on the VC except me. Never seen anybody mention Rory Gallagher. But I'll tell you what, number 9, lots of people mention these guys. The Rolling Stones, Exile on Main Street. This uh, is an original copy, one of my greatest finds ever. Found this at that famous estate sale that I've told you about. And here is the, I'm sure just about everybody knows, you know, what this album looks like. You know, their albums are here inside this pocket. This one has all the postcards with it. Um, when it comes to Rolling Stones, basically this is the last of their, what I call their big four albums, uh, starting with, uh, Beggar's Banquet, uh, Let It Bleed, Sticky Fingers, and this album. This is where the Rolling Stones honestly were the world's greatest rock and roll band. Uh, this album, all four sides are equally strong. It's killer from beginning to end. You know, it's not like, you know, other double albums like, say, the White Album, where you're like, ah, I wish they didn't put that in there, you know, I wish they would have got rid of Revolution 9, if they'd done this, if they'd have done that. You don't get any of that with this album. Every song fits. Every song 
is not uh, doesn't seem extraneous and uh, this is really the, the last time the Rolling Stones were ever as good as their reputations were that followed yeah they put out albums after this one you know and they had some good songs here and there but they for my money they never um, made another album beginning to end as good as this one so uh, really uh, when I was thinking of this list, I kind of had the, these 10 albums in mind. And I, I didn't know if I was going to pull any, move them up or down. But uh, I knew this one was going to make my top 10 for sure. So I put it at number 9. Uh, Exile on Main Street by the Rolling Stones. <clears throat> and in all honesty, all of these albums that I'm showing are are 10 albums for me. I mean, they're, they're all classics, basically, front to back. And... Mm, on almost on any given day, any of these 10 could probably be number one, I would think. But, um, yeah. <laughs> number eight. Here's another one. Front to back classic. Led Zeppelin 1. Uh, this is the, uh, I call them the Jimmy Page remasters from 2015. That's where this one came from. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically, I, I could read you the entire track list and, and everyone would be like, yeah, great song. That's a great song. Yeah, great song. Uh, for my money, actually, my favorite, one of my favorite Zeppelin songs of all time is Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. I just love the, uh, the mix of the acoustic guitar with Plant's voice. The drumming is just fantastic. But really, um, for a debut album, this has got to be one of the all-time greats. Uh, the first Led Zeppelin album. Yeah. That's uh, number eight. Right? Right. Number eight. Speaking of live albums by Guitar Heroes, at number seven is Band of Gypsies by Jimi Hendrix. Uh, if, if for no other reason than for Machine Gun, that makes this album an automatic classic for me. Uh... Yeah, and uh, this is a reissue as well. Came out a couple of years ago. It was uh, it was a replica Capital Green Capital label, but it's on uh, pink vinyl, clear pink vinyl. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this is another one. I wish I could have seen him back in the day. But uh, yeah, but I mean, besides uh, Machine Gun, which which takes up almost all of side one, uh, we got to live together. Message to love changes, all on side two. This is when he was uh, touring with Buddy Miles, and uh, hearing this just makes you wonder what direction uh, Hendrix would have gone had he lived. Personally. Personally, I probably think he, he would have done something like uh, Carlos Santana did. I think he probably would have gone in like in a more uh, fusion direction in the 70s. That's just, I, I have nothing to uh, prove that or back that up. That's just a, a guess on my part. But uh, yeah, Jimi Hendrix, Band of Gypsies is my number seven album. All of these are classics. I want to play all of these right now. I wish I could just sit here and just listen to these albums, one after the other after the other. <laughs> that would make for a very long video, but still. Uh, number six, Big Star, uh, number one record. I've, I've talked about these guys before. Uh, like I said, this is a mid-80s reissue. And even this was a bitch to get, let me tell you. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to swear, but... When I got these records, I was, this one in Radio City, I, when I got these, I was almost literally jumping for joy. I was so freaking happy. But um, you've heard me talk about Big Star before. I know other people have talked about Big Star before. You know, they're probably the biggest cult band ever, I think. And uh, uh, <laughs> it, it's hard to... to it's hard to describe these these records because I, I know everybody knows them. My words probably aren't going to 
do much justice. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of keep rolling on. I mean, number one record by Big Star is my number six album. Okay, we're up into the top five now. At number five is The Wall. Um, when it came to Pink Floyd albums, it's just, this is an original copy. And it had a, uh, I have it inside, there's like a little card that said Pink Floyd The Wall that, that came in here on the front cover. When I was thinking of Pink Floyd to put on the list, uh, I wanted to go with Dark Side of the Moon. And and that's an, that's another classic album, without a doubt. But uh, The Wall is such a, an epic, monumental work that I, I, I had to go with these guys instead. With, with Not these guys, with this album instead. Duh. Um, yeah. I wish... Uh, I wish I'd seen the, uh, I wish I'd caught the Roger Waters tour when he toured this a couple years ago, but I didn't. But uh, this is another double album, you know, side one through side four is all classic. It all fits. It all tells a coherent story. And the sound is just fantastic. It's pretty much the last gasp of uh, the original Pink Floyd. But boy, did they go out in its style, I'm telling you. Um, this, this is a record that uh, takes you places. It takes you on a, on a journey. It's always not, a, not always a pleasant one, but it's uh, well worth the taking, I think. And uh, sonically, this is a great, great album. The Wall by Pink Floyd is my number five album. At number four <clears throat> is yet another live album by band that I, uh, well, I'm just going to show it to you and start talking. At Fillmore East by the Allman Brothers. Allman Brothers, one of my all-time favorite bands. And this is one of my all-time favorite albums. Here's the back. I'm pretty sure everybody knows this one. Just show the gatefold real quick. The cover here is in kind of delicate shape. It is an original pink label Capricorn copy, which still sounds pretty decent. And believe it or not, I found this at a half price books. I know. Uh, I've owned this album on every format you can think of. I've had this on CD. I still have it on CD. Used to have it on cassette, which is where I listened to it the most in the car. And last but not least, I picked it up on vinyl a few years ago. I've got the expanded edition called the Fillmore Concerts, which is on CD that came out in the, I want to say, 90s. I wish I would got the uh, box, the vinyl box set of the entire Fillmore Concerts. That's just too much out of my price range. Maybe someday. Um, as far as peak albums by bands, I certainly think this is one for the Allman Brothers. This is the one. Uh, it's the original lineup. And they incorporate, you know, besides rock and blues, they've got, you know, some jazzy elements in there. Uh, excellent, excellent playing. I mean, the band's really tight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's hard to talk about this album because... Uh, these guys, I've, I've seen these guys live so many times throughout the 90s and early 2000s that uh, it's a shame that uh, there's not uh, too many left. I think the only ones left alive are Dickie Betts and J-Mo. Everyone else is gone. Ugh, that's depressing. But we'll always have this album. Um, God, I mean, Dwayne Allman, one of the all-time greats. Probably the greatest uh, slide player ever. Uh, Greg Allman, one of my all-time favorite singers. Uh, yeah, these guys, these guys were, they were the best for what they did in this time period. They were the best, without a doubt. And uh, it makes it. Uh, this is my number four album. 
The Allman Brothers at Fillmore East. It's a classic. At number three is an album that always makes me feel good every time I listen to it. Harvest by Neil Young. This is an original copy. It's got the textured cover. There's the back. It's another one I'm pretty sure everybody knows. You can see the gatefold there. Yeah, I could have gone with maybe a more um, exotic pick. But among Neil albums, you know, and, and maybe tried to, I don't know, make myself look like more of a in-the-know guy with, with Neil Young. But you know what? When, when it comes to wanting to listen to Neil, most of the time, this is the album I'm picking up. And I've got nearly all of his albums. I mean, yeah, there's, there's other ones that I like, without a doubt. I mean, he's made several, several classic albums. But uh, quite honestly, Tonight's the Night's not an album that I'm necessarily going to want to pick up and play all the time. Uh, I could. <laughs> there's a bunch of others that are, they're good to listen to, but it's like, you know, with repeated listens, you're like, all right, enough already. Not so with this album. This album is quiet. It's very um, thoughtful, reflective, peaceful. It has great sound. I mean, it was his, yeah, it was his biggest hit, but it was his biggest hit for a reason. I mean, the the songs on here are pretty timeless. And I think uh, long after we're all dead and gone, this album will still be played well into the future. I would think this is a this is a classic album. And uh, Neil, Neil had to be on the list. And uh, I think number three is a pretty good place to put uh, Harvest. So, uh, yeah, this is probably my, my favorite Neil Young album. And uh, it almost made my uh, number one. But uh, when you see what's coming, you'll, you'll see why. So uh, number three is Harvest by Neil Young. Okay, two more to go. At number two. Station to Station by David Bowie. My favorite Bowie album by far. Um, it's only six tracks long. It's a, it's a short album, but every track is killer. Every song fits. And, I mean... I'll just show the back. It's a pretty basic back cover. Um, this is uh, an original RCA copy. I also have this um, in the uh, the second uh, Bowie box set that was released uh, called uh, Who Can I Be Now? It has uh, this original mix reissued and the uh, Harry Maslin mix, which is a little bit different than the original. Um, yeah, when it comes to Bowie albums, this is, this is the one for me. Um, Station to Station, a classic, uh, the title track is, is a classic. Just hearing that, that sound effects of that train when the song starts, you know, puts you in a, puts you in a different place. Golden Years is a, you know, proto-disco, Euro-disco track, but he makes it work. Excellent singing, excellent playing. Word on a Wing, TVC 15, Stay. That's a classic song. I love I love Stay and, and Wild is the Wind. There you go. It's the whole the whole album right there. Perfect. This is a perfect album. And uh you know, this comes, you know, like right in the middle of of the 70s, which is Bowie's golden period. And he made many classic albums before this one and many after, but for some reason, this is the one that speaks to me. Whenever I, uh, whenever I think of Bowie, whenever I reach for a Bowie record, chances are pretty good this is a contender to get picked. So uh, this is my number two album, Station to Station by David Bowie. Classic. I've been saying classic a lot. They are. All these albums are classics. Okay. We've come to that point in the list. We're down to the final album. And uh, just to build it up a, a tiny bit, this is another album like uh, Fillmore East, 
which I owned on every format. And um, I bought, I, I used to have the uh, original release with all of the inserts. There were like 17 of them or something. Uh, and uh, I don't have that anymore, but that's okay. Uh, I've had this on cassette when it was released in re-released in 1995 it was uh, slightly expanded there were I think uh, the original album was six tracks and I think the 95 reissue added like another six and it threw in a couple of uh, Tommy songs in there too I wore that cassette out and then I ended up buying that on CD and then my wife being once again the wonderful person that she is bought this for me for my for Valentine's Day a couple of years ago and this is uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna show it my number one album live at Leeds by the who uh, this set is the 40th anniversary ultimate collectors edition which comes in a very nice slip case. You can see there is a, let me pull these out here. <clears throat> there is a hardcover book that comes with the uh, set that uh, recreates a lot of the, uh, it recreates a lot of the inserts. They're just pictures and it gives you you know, concert photos, and there's a couple of different essays in here talking about the making of the album. And then you have the set itself, which consists of a 45 of Summertime Blues and the studio version of Heaven and Hell which was the lead-off track on the 95 reissue. That is a 45 on Polydor. That goes there. And then this uh, opens up. These two CDs here are the Live at Leeds uh, complete album. Featuring uh, the complete performance, which includes a full live version of the Tommy album. And these two CDs down here uh, is the Live at Hull set, which I think originally was going to be the um, venue for the album release, but there was an error. There were some recording mistakes on the first couple of tracks, and I think John Entwistle's bass was, uh, was cut out. So... Uh, thanks to the wonders of digital technology, those uh, his bass lines were taken from a different um, set and reinserted. And uh, it was re live at Hull was re-released, re I believe, in the early early two thousands. Don't quote me. And then, of course, this includes a replica of the original. Vinyl album, um, 180 gram vinyl. Um, what can I tell you? I, I practically have this concert memorized. I absolutely love it. I, the Who were, I, I saw, the only time I saw the Who was in 1996 when they did their Quadrophenia tour. But for me, if I was able to uh, see the original lineup, if I, was, if, if I could set my time machine, this would be where I would go. Besides Woodstock, this would be my, my second stop right here. I'd see them all over again. Uh, great, great musicianship. I mean, Keith Moon, in a live setting, really drove the band like no other drummer did for for their respective band i mean the only i mean you you can name you know some other guys that are famous you know drumming for their group and um keith moon just 
pretty much blows them all away as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's precise, powerful, playful. It's a lot of alliteration, I know, but it's true. Um, Townsend was a fantastic guitarist. You know, he, he can rip off the power chords like nobody else and still play, you know, delicate leads. Uh, Entwistle basically playing lead bass. And uh, Roger Daltrey, you know, it was in this, this time period here where Roger Daltrey finally became the great lead singer that that we all know and love. I mean, he was good in the 60s, but it it just seemed like his voice just grew in power. And he just seemed to just open himself up to the music more. And uh, this is when the Who were, were the greatest, for sure, without a doubt. And... Uh, I think in, as far as live albums go, this one stands tall with the rest. I mean, you could even make a strong case for it being uh, the greatest live album, I think. And there are many, many great live albums out there. Um, yeah, I, I could put this on any time and be happy. Any time. doesn't matter that I've, I've listened to this a million times, and, and I probably have, honestly, listened to this a million times. So there you go. That was my number one album, Live at Leeds by The Who. Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming along with me on this uh, list. Even if you just skip ahead just to see what I show, just to see what the list is, that's fine too. Um, yeah, I'm going to be taking a break from lists for a little while. I have an idea for another Top 100, but I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to do it or not if it's feasible, but uh, for the next uh, little while here, I'm going to be taking a break from lists. <laughs> As you can see, this has been a lot of work, but it's also been a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for liking and subscribing. I've gotten a lot of new subscribers lately. Appreciate that very greatly. And uh, take care, everyone. I will see you again soon. Rock on.